We are Trek Yards. Lower your shields. Resistance is futile. We will teach you stuff. Click that Captain like Foley. button and subscribe <laughs> to Trek Yards, or you'll be assimilated. But you'll be anyway, because we make cool stuff. And I'm Kamano Kongs. So welcome back, guys. The Borg are back in town. Over the weekend, we had San Diego Comic-Con. We had the trailer for Picard, the first full trailer dropped, and it was fantastic. It showed us a lot of cool stuff. One of which is the Borg, which is a really important uh, kind of race species in the Star Trek universe. So we're here to talk a little bit about that, the things we saw, the things we think. The Borg are both the most interesting, but also the most overused of the villains. And obviously Picard has the most, the most personal Besides seven of nine, but guess what? She's in it too. <gasps> the most personal uh, stakes when it comes to the Borg. So I guess if you if you know you got Patrick maybe two to three seasons, if he's you know signed on to be interested in that, and he implies he has been. If you tackle the Borg, it's it's the biggest can of worms to can of worms to open, but one of the most interesting can of worms. We are both pretty uh, surprised to see not only just the implication of Borg, a Borg cube, an assimilated dude being taken apart. Seven of Nine returning, and in the panel, Hugh. And if you remember, Hugh was the Borg they freed in early TNG. His ship was destroyed. He regained his um, a bit of his humanity. He picked a name for himself. <gasps> oh my god, the Borg. They sent him back to the Collective to wit. He, and, and this is one of the prevailing theories, he influenced the entire Collective to become more individual, individual which maybe spawned the Borg Queen. Ooh, interesting. And then we see him again, uh, needing a new sort of collective after the problems happened. And he met up with Law, which links into the fact that Brent Spiner is back in this trailer. And now here he is in the show. He said he's definitely a Borg, or at least a future version of Borg. He's evolved. But, you know, Hugh has connections to Law and Borg. And Brent's in it. And he's in it. And Jerry's in it. I mean, that's some serious Borg is in this. A cube... Q, seven of nine, assimilated. There. It's a few things, Stuart. It's not just Borg, it's Borg. Uh, the inclusion of Hugh is very important. <laughs> um, uh, that's something I did not expect. When I heard that, I was like, hmm, very nice. Well, I love how you said, you know, introducing the Borg is like opening a can of worms. I think it's more like opening a can of nanites, personally. But... Speaking of, there is a Borg cube in this, um, which looks like it's being used as an internment camp or a prison of sorts, um, and it's controlled by the Romulans by the feel and look of things. So uh, the the context of that is very interesting. We see surgery going on um, on, looks like, former Borg uh, as well. So there's a lot of maybe shadiness going on around here, uh, and I'm not sure exactly how the Romulans are going to fit in with the Federation, because it seems like Picard has some Romulans yep. on his side. he said that. Yep. yep. Uh, and these guys, you know, if they're holding former Borg prisoner, it doesn't jive with Federation ideals, unless the Federation endorses it, in which case Picard left because of that. So it, there's a lot of weird contextual stuff here that I don't know how it's going to fit in and play, but the prison of a Borg cube... I think that's a fantastic idea. Uh, as you had said before, it's very, it's, it's large. <laughs> um, and a good way to kind of torture your prisoners, I guess, is keep them in the space that, you know, they didn't want to be in in the first place because they were assimilated. Uh, one thing that we said, the risk of the Borg is that the aesthetic obviously improved drastically over TNG to the movie. And then Voyage used the same costumes because they were expensive and used um, in the same sets as well. So the Borg have a very set aesthetic. They're space zombies with sort of a, a cybernetic slash organic feel. Now, if you're going to reinvent them, I know they said very early on that the makeup guy really wanted to tackle a Borg. And they can see he was not being metaphorical. He was like, I can't wait to tackle a Borg in the show I'm being hired to do. Ah. They could easily just make super, you know, just like Iron Man in, in uh, Endgame and such, you know, Nano, you know, look at a Borg that can create, the, you know, swords. It's like, oh, that's not great. I mean, it's it's futury, but it's not what the Borg are, what they've been. You know, the, the limitations are also kind of fun. What I'm sensing from this is that to avoid that problem of, wow, you originally rebooted the Borg, the Borg are still the Borg, but this is a separate 
iteration in the sense that the, after the queen was killed, quote unquote, and this and the hive mindness of the collective was shattered, the factions could be created by uh, Q, by by Borg, fun individuality, maybe someone to stay in their collective, but now with one voice, their voice. You know, there's things about that as we saw with Hugh looking to law. You know, that happened once; it could happen again. And then if they're left to their own de uh, devices to invent technology of 20 years, then you can see now really advanced looking Borg with really sleek looking stuff. That would be, that would be then make sense. These aren't the Borg. These are then this new phase of Borg after, you know, Rebel Borg. That's why I jump into like different phases of Romulans, you know, different sects. One little small note that if you go to the shot in the, the, the first shot in the prison where we look down, there's actually several Andorians. Which I absolutely love seeing that, you know, one of the biggest complaints we have of, like, Star Trek Beyond and such, they keep inventing new races to sell toys, sell merchandise, but you've got this massive array of aliens that you have and should use, and so having Andorians right in there. I mean, I've never seen an Andorian Borg, although I wouldn't necessarily know if I did. But there are Andorians right there, they're very familiar hair and, and tendrils, and just very excited about simple things like that, because if they use the universe... See, the interesting thing is that sign, too, that says, you know, 5,800 and whatever days without assimilation... How are people still being assimilated if they've already taken care of that? Uh, is there something on board the ship that just won't die? <laughs> um, or is it like a nanites taking hold of a body again after they've kind of deborgified it? That interests me quite a bit <laughs> to find out what that... And why is that sign there, really? I mean, that's just for laughs, I think. Because uh, would the Romulans really do that, and in English, and... Or do they have to get down on their knees and, like, write it backwards on the sign? Or do they have a scissor lift that goes up to write that every day? Like, really? I think it would be a digital display. I think power is limited to what, you know, can't overpower everything because they might be able to get access to it. Yeah, that that is the most interesting part of this trailer to some extent because it gives you a time, it gives you a feel, it gives you a timeline. The fact that it says this facility implies there's multiple cubes or spheres. They've got multiple prisons. You know, each, you know... A Borg cube, we said this before, each cube will actually be unique because it individually assimilates different races as it goes. Has any, you know, there aren't cubes being made every every two years and then retired. I mean, there are cubes that haven't been destroyed that are presumably hundreds of years old, potentially, that just keep being modified and if they can self-repair, they can self-change, updating, la, la, la. You know, so this cube, you know, if they, if the, the Romulans' idea is to keep finding cubes and taking the people and, and getting the tech, getting the whatever, using that tech for maybe they can't make Borg tech, but for their new body armor, you have to have like the regenerative shield pieces from Borg people. And since there was such this, you know, holocaust of killing the Borg, you know, revenge, there's only a certain amount of cubes and blah blah blah. So they've got, you know, there's all these things you could do with that. And so this just this facility makes it a multiple, which is interesting. That many days of assimilation tells me that these guys, these cre these people, these ex-Borg, as I, I said earlier, but you disagreed with a different video, that you know you can't remove all the nanites, the nanoprobes from somebody's body, that Picard you know, in First Contact sensed the Borg because he said Borg tech in him in some small way, just like 709 has to have some. So my assumptions, all, and, and as we saw Shakote with all those people, they all had Borg, different levels of Borg in still in them. You, you, once, once you're there, you can't remove it all because it's that invasive. And we've got, you know, seven trillion nanoprobes I mean, if one's in your pinky, that you know, it's hard to remove it all. So I'm assuming that that, that means that you know, these are all ex Borg, but they still have the circuitry to some extent inside them. And you know, 18 years of healing, you can get your hair back. You can, you know, you can get a lot of your humanity back. But they've still got pieces. What if, like you say, what if one goes rogue? What if one? I mean, 16 years is a long time, or I think it's like 16 years, 13 years. It's over 10 years. Mm. It's quite a lot of time. So it's definitely. This isn't a regular thing, but over a decade ago could have been, you know, that one, like, Spartacus character. No, we'll rise up for the prisoners and we'll get out of here. And then he gets killed. And, you know, he assimilates one guard because if they can get, you know. So the, the fact that there's been that many days shows they're not a threat anymore. They've been pacified. Well, I mean, speaking of Borg, we see Seven or Nine return. And I just want to make a little note that her implant or her whatever, although very similar shaped, same kind of sort of details, if you actually side by side them... It's a different color. It's there's a few different details. It's I'm wondering if it's been replaced because the, the the doctor was making a big deal in the last episode of Voyager of being able to remove these or remove some of her other Borg implants, um, if I recall correctly. Um, so are they 
still Borg tech? Are they updated Federation Borg tech? <laughs> it just they look odd. They look different. I just wanted to point it out. I don't know if she's still got the same implant she had from Voyager because there are some distinct differences. I mean, we're going to do a separate video on Jerry Ryan coming back, um, but obviously you know you can watch both. We're going to say different things in each one. Yeah, it you know th th I think the main difference is because what it was made originally was a was a, a, a you know one style of tech, and now it can be actually 3D print, you know, they can take a scan of a face and actually 3D print a exacting piece to a head. The other was never as perfect. It was just harder to do. So I think it's just, you know, different material, different stretch value, so you can do more with it, so it just feels different. But yeah, I've got, you know, the comparison you'll see in the Jerry Ryan is, is here now. You can see instantly it's the exact same shape until you look close, and then all the shapes are different, kind of like the Discovery Enterprise. Oh, it looks the same, but every single piece is different in this Every single piece is different, um, so it's not the same, but it is the same. Now you could, that could be because of licensing, you can't get the rights to it. We won't get into that now, but you know um, she's still got metal in her face, and there's no reason to assume that you couldn't remove one and put on another, improve it. You know, if I was her, used to having the enhanced strength. You know, we haven't seen her arms, which has those pieces, but she still has this piece, so she's not removed several pieces, which is why I use the still, because we can see, yeah. Maybe she still wants to have that enhancement, you know. Um, so I think I believe that eye is actually fake. That's part of it. It's actually a completely um, mechanical eye that just blends in. You know, I can see her saying, you know, I'm I'm not so proud of this, but I'm I'm not ashamed of who I am, and I want to have the features this this allows. It's just the enhanced version twenty years later. Yeah, it's a long time. Well, exactly, it is a long time, and from what we saw on the board cube with the the whole guy on the slab with. You know they're taking they're taking a thing off his face. He's cut up. They've obviously taken a lot of implants out. There's still tubes in his chest, so they haven't got everything out. Obviously, like you said, I think the longer you've been assimilated, the, the less likely it is to have everything or most of the stuff removed. Because Picard was not assimilated for very long, and he seems to be pretty much fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm wondering if there's. Um, if that's one of the reasons that perhaps he left Starfleet was just his, the Romulan's treatment of these Borg prisoners. Um, and it's if, if, if Starfleet sanctions it and allows it, that would definitely sour him a little bit to Starfleet because he was a Borg. That being said, in First Contact, he's like, oh, Kill them all. Yeah, it's better if he just dies. Trust me. It's like, but he, they saved you. <laughs> Yeah, but so, as, as as often people say, there's the show Picard and boom, boom, shoot, shoot, movie Picard. Because Patrick wanted more action and they gave him more action. And, you know, tonally he's a different character. But, I mean, they can just tonally reshoot. Again, 20 years. If, if we had this massive Borg renaissance, you know, again, how many cubes are in the Alpha Quadrant? I would, or how many ships? I would assume a for you, just doing things. I mean, the Queen is 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 not multitasking her seven hundred trillion, you know, drones. So they're on millions of missions doing just random things. A lot on autopilot. So how many could you find? And yeah, I would assume that Picard would take it personally to make sure these people are. Real. Yeah, I love the idea that he's fought Starfleet. He said, "Guys, you can't just let them die." I survived. Seven of nine, who I've known for several years now, because Nemesis is after Voyager anyway, and I've known her for years. We want to be trying to help these people. Oh no, we're fine. We're letting you know the the the, Rom the new Romulan Senate. I was surprised to see the Borg back in such a capacity, and then to have Seven of Nine show up. Obviously, there's a tie in there. And looking at the trailer frame by frame, there's some some hints that the the new girl um, is somebody that has escaped from a Borg for the Borg facility, and that she's. Yeah, and we're going to be doing a video talking about her and our thoughts about that. I didn't think the Borg would be so closely t tied in with this, but it makes sense because it is Picard. That was a big part of his life. It almost changed the course of his career. Um, after the assimilation and getting uh, rescued, he almost left Starfleet because of that. Uh, ended up not doing so. So it's a good it's a good place to start with Picard. Well, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. We had some technical difficulties, unfortunately. But... We're back. And uh, anyway, I'll just continue my thought process there. Uh, I was saying that um, the Borg were kind of overused a little bit in Voyager. It got to the point where, oh, we're just going to assimilate ourselves, go over to the Borg cube, do what we need to do, come back and de assimilate ourselves. That like, did really? happen, didn't it? Yeah. Janeway, Tuvok, and Bolana were all Borgified and then unborgified 
before everything took hold. Ooh, and it just it got a little it got a little bit silly and overused. So I just hope they're used properly here. Um, I don't think they're going to be a big bad guy threat, but it's going to be the impetus for something else for sure. So yeah, and 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 that's fine. Like the next evolution of Borg or whatever. So yeah, for me the context is it's the Borg technology that is the threat. It's what it can do. It's how it can be changed to do. Not necessarily the Borg as a as an entity as a threat, or what's at risk there. But anyway, guys, um, I think we're gonna call that quits for this discussion. What are your thoughts on the Borg coming back for Picard? Was it a natural thing that had to happen? Are you happy about it? Are you mad about it? Let us know in the comments section. Always love getting your input as well. Um, and stay tuned. We're going to be doing different lives and different videos about all this kind of stuff over the next couple weeks. Uh, and even more news when it comes out at Vegas. So definitely subscribe to the channel. Being a subscriber is very important for the channel and for you guys. Also click the notification icon and be sure to like the video. Just simple little things that you can do to help out our channel. And uh, there's going to be a lot more Star Trek news coming out. So you got to stay tuned, guys. Yes, and yeah, we'll talk more about Joe Ryan as well in a separate video, another small video, so check those out. Our lives every single night. Tune in for them, enjoy Super Chat, Sports and Patreon, all great things. Until then, guys, I am Command Films. And I am Captain Foley, and resistance is still futile. Click that subscribe button. See you then. I'm going to keep saying click subscribe, click subscribe, click subscribe.